Chapter 11 The walk back to town was exceedingly uncomfortable. Twilight hadn't said another word since the awkward conversation over lunch. She just walked along behind me with her head down and cheeks scarlet. Fluttershy was also behind me, after having insisted that I walk in front so I didn't see anything awkward. She seemed to be referring to Twilight, but I couldn't be sure. I felt kind of like a little schoolboy being punished, really. The worst part was that I couldn't read either of their expressions. Neither of them seemed outwardly angry at me, which confused and frustrated me. I'd almost rather take yelling than this strange alienation. Spike shot me a confused shrug from Twilight's back before I turned my head to face forwards again. Rarity, seemingly totally unfazed by events, walked directly to my right. She looked deep in thought, however, so I elected not to bother her. I guess the elements of harmony were imperfect enough to have disagreements. Oddly, I could relate a little better with that. Once again, I wore saddlebags. These were Twilight's picnic bags this time. I found an odd comfort in wearing them. Honestly, they didn't really cover much or protect me all that well, but it was more psychological effect of carrying them. The extra weight, this time of three stones alongside the picnic supplies made me feel a little more stable on my hoofs, too. It was Rarity's idea that I'd be the one to carry the accursed things, having shown an ability to somewhat resist them, just in case they decided to seep through the fabric or something. I doubted they would, as they hadn't been affected by the shovel, ground, or the fabric when we put them into the bags. Still, couldn't hurt. It was a long 20 minutes of walking before we got back to the library. Rarity parted ways with us, saying she had fabric in today that she needed to sort and unpack. Fluttershy seemed hesitant, but followed us into the building. Twilight slowly climbed the stairs to the loft immediately, and I purposefully turned away as deliberately as possible in order to not be accused of ogling again. Spike shook his head and followed after her. Fluttershy watched them go before sighing tiredly again. When I glanced over, she noticed and gave me a worn-out smile. You okay? I asked her quietly. She nodded, her smile getting a touch of warmth. Yes, thank you. I'll go up and talk to her. Try to get her to calm down. She offered, starting towards the stairs. What do you think's the matter? I asked her, hoping for some insight. She's a very... Um, disciplined pony. She's probably never considered, um, a topic like this before, and she's just overreacting to an obvious joke. She reasoned, sounding extremely diplomatic. I sighed and nodded, wishing I could ask the same of herself. I settled with, are you sure you're all right? She didn't say anything for a few moments. She looked directly at me and smiled, a small blush creeping onto her cheeks. I'm fine. It makes me happy you're concerned, though. You, um... We should talk more. And I want to look at your injuries again. She suggested. A little twinge of sadness slipped through me, but I squished it down fast. Fluttershy still seemed to catch it, though, and I quickly flashed her a warmer smile. That sounds good. Maybe I'll drop by tomorrow, I offered. Fluttershy observed me with careful skepticism, but then smiled and nodded tiredly. Yes, that would be good. I'll go see if I can talk to Twilight then. She agreed, and I kicked myself for letting her see that falter. Tell her I'm sorry for what it's worth, I added, frowning again and looking up the stairs. Fluttish I nodded and turned, and I was snagged in hesitation. She was to the base of the stairs when I continued with, And to you, too. She stopped with her right forehoof on the first step, pink mane shifting forwards gently. She peeked up at me questioningly, eyes locking with my own as I watched her. She was very pretty. It upset me that she didn't feel the same, but 
I didn't want that feeling upsetting her or getting in the way of our friendship. Her expression softened before she gave a single shake of her head. The warm smile said she forgave me, but the head shake indicated either otherwise or disagreement with something else entirely. I had no idea what the blush meant. Tomorrow, is all she said before heading back up the stairs. <sighs> I sighed weakly, letting out a breath I hadn't realized I'd been holding. I had to do something. If I was going to fit in here, I needed to get myself under control. It was causing so much tension and throwing every pony off balance. To distract myself, I went about unpacking the saddlebags after slipping them off of myself and onto a nearby table. Carefully adjusting the stones through the fabric, I shifted them until I could get at the picnic supplies instead. I moved them out of the bags first and then just stared at the rocks. One side contained two rocks and the other contained the other rock, and a sealed bag of soil and grass samples from the crater. Twilight had collected them before going emotionally comatose, I recalled. Another twinge of guilt struck me, and I sighed wearily. I really needed to get a hold on my emotions. Then the proverbial light bulb flashed on in my head. Turning from the saddlebags, I looked around the main room curiously. Walls and walls of carefully organized books met my gaze, and I smiled. Surely I wasn't the first one with this issue. Maybe there was some sort of magic already formulated to help. I trotted over to the nearest shelf and tried to get a grasp of how the books were organized. Twilight didn't seem to keep any index cards for the place, so she must have some sort of organization method, right? It only took me a moment to realize they were alphabetized. Rapidly going through the shelves, I got down to the S section fairly quickly. Spells, 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 spells. Twilight was a magic user, so she had to have spellbooks somewhere. After searching for several minutes, I got frustrated. There was nothing on spells directly at all. History... Background information, important ponies, styles. No application or technique to be found. Crap. Then it dawned on me. This was a public library. Twilight's personal books would be upstairs in her bookcases I saw earlier. My ears folded back and I sagged, wandering back over to the table and the saddlebags. I heard voices from upstairs and debated if I should listen or not. Of course, they probably assumed I was down here, when I didn't really have anywhere else to go. You know how Rainbow Dash is, Twilight? I heard Spike say from somewhere near the stairs. He sounded a little frustrated. I know, I know, I just... I don't know how to feel. I don't have time for a boyfriend, what with all my studying. Tall, I muttered, sounding stressed. What? I did a double take and was definitely listening now. Screw propriety. Twilight, all he did was accidentally look at your flank when you turned. You're overreacting. Fluttish eyes spoke softly. I mean, uh, true, I guess. I started considering my own feelings. Twala was definitely pretty and really nice to me most of the time. She got distracted a lot, though. And it really didn't look like some pony else was a priority in her life at the moment. Fluttershy had her animal she took care of, and I got classified as that, sadly. So that kept her rather busy, probably. So neither of them were interested in me in that sort of manner, to my knowledge. I, however, saw good traits toward both. I frowned. I certainly couldn't have both, obviously. But then again, neither of them wanted me anyway, so why was I even thinking about this? It was a moot point. I set my head down on my hooves at the table. Frustration boiled over, and I felt like smashing my head into the flat surface. That just left the problem as my own. Time to buck up and just deal with it, I suppose. Teaching my vulgar body a lesson also sounded like an idea if I could find a way to butcher the hormones. There was the answer. I mean, obviously, all of this frustration was just chemicals. I didn't want myself to actually be the cause of any issues. 
there had to be a way for me to fix the chemicals, right? I've never done this before and couldn't find a book on it anywhere. What does that mean? Twilight asked, sounding as frustrated as I was. Well, that was easy enough to answer. Although, was it? I was starting to question my own desires, so I wasn't so sure anymore. There was a sardonic sigh. That he's into mares and thinks you're cute? Seems simple enough to me. Spike groaned out. Well, yeah, but which one? But he likes you, Fluttershy. I already said that. What does that mean? She returned, confused and frustrated sounding. A ball of ice fell into my stomach. She told Fluttershy? But she was supposed to keep that a secret. Why did she tell her? More importantly, when did she tell her? Are you sure? Oh dear, that's why he was upset then. Oh, I'm so stupid. Fluttershy muttered, barely audible. There is a light chortle from Spike. Then... You just now realized how it sounded? <laughs> Spike was acting like he knew what she had said before I mentioned something to Twilight this afternoon. Wait, he was asleep when I was talking about that. Spike! Ugh. You aren't stupid, Fluttershy. Relax. He can't like both of us, and he likes you, so he must not like me, right? Twilight reasoned. But what if he does like both of us? Or if he hates me now that I was so stupid? Fluttershy asked, sounding hurt. I didn't hate her. <sighs> My brain felt like it was stuffed with lukewarm mud. Damn it, everything was falling apart. What hadn't I been told? Who had said what to whom? No, just... Ah! I can't think about this right now. I have these readings to analyze... Oh no, he sleeps up here too! Twilight exclaimed, getting louder and faster as she went. I heard her shift closer to the right corner where the cot was. She was starting to sound panicked, which is something I could relate to. So, you slept here last night too? Spike reminded, sounding a little annoyed. Oh no, don't make her even more agitated, Spike! There was a momentary pause. What if he tries something, though? She asked. Another ball of ice joined the first in my stomach. Why would I... Why would he do that, Twilight? He wouldn't force you. He's a nice pony. Fluttish, I asked, voice getting a little stronger and hopefully mirroring my own thoughts, though the compliment made me blush slightly. But what if I... <sighs> she started before trailing off weakly. What if she what? I swallowed painfully, dreading what she must think of me in her mind. <sighs> no. Just no. He sleeps somewhere else for now. I need to think. I need to compile this data. She finally decided. Ball three joined and I started to shiver. I tried to blink away moisture in my eyes. Wishing I had a time machine to go back and fix everything. Or just bitch slap and garrot myself before I left the crater. But what about his bed? Fluttish I asked, suddenly sounding panicked. There was a snarl of frustration above me, somewhat akin to what I presumed a lion pouncing on a large goat would sound like. It's the Apple family's bed, not his, and I don't care! Twilight shouted. There was a loud crashing noise, followed by Spike exclaiming, Whoa, Twilight! The bed suddenly slid down the stairs violently, legs folded up under it and popping stubby wheels out in their place. Not that the wheels were helping its violent descent much. I swallowed heavily and just stared at the bed that lay there on the floor. <sighs> well, that confirmed it. Because of my stupidity... I was homeless again. Wow. A simple gaze caused all this. One I hadn't even really thought about at the time. 
could have basically been an accident. A lot of this would probably be easier to shrug off if it wasn't mostly my doing, of course. I felt a couple warm streaks slide down my cheeks, but I shook my head rapidly, sending them flying. I should leave them be and let things cool off. It sounded reasonable, in light of the mental image of being flung out the second story window by similar energy that propelled the bed. Glancing over at the saddlebags, I decided that the stones would probably be safer here. Twala would probably be pissed if I took her saddlebags with me anyway. Having nothing of my own, I reminded myself. I didn't even have anything to carry them with. With nothing left to do, I wandered over to my cot. Well, Applejack's cot. It didn't take me long to find a leather straps on the front of the mattress. Son of a bitch, this thing was heavy. I mean, sure, it had wheels, but they were tiny, and obviously not meant for distance. It didn't help that the straps were awkwardly angled, and I had to balance the strap carefully across my collarbone, or else it would slip downwards and trip me, or slip upwards and choke me. And the setup was seriously starting to chafe my flanks, too. Still, I must have been quite an amusing sight. A bandaged up, emaciated stallion with no cutie mark, dragging a folded cot down the road, and crying pitifully like an idiot. <laughs> I mean, at this point, rumor had already probably spread that I was batshit insane, so maybe they were jaded to strange behavior from me by now. Me? Bitter? Nah. A few ponies stopped to whisper, but I was largely avoided. Which was wise. Never talk to the crazy ones. I momentarily entertained thoughts of this being all one long and detailed hallucination, and me being locked away in some padded room somewhere for my own safety. <laughs> ah well. Thoughts like that would hardly do if this was the reality I was restricted to anyway. Who cared about what wasn't right in front of them? The makeshift harness suddenly went taut and yanked my head back. Choking and flailing my forehoofs in the air, I realized my own back hooves were wedging me in place. Trying not to panic, I shifted backwards, bracing my neck against the leather, and falling back away from it onto my haunches. With the strap now loosened, I took welcomed gulps of sweet, sweet air. And then questioned what the hell happened. I whipped my head around and came face to face with two bright blue eyes and a whole lot of pink. Ah, crap. Hiya! <laughs> You're messy! Pinkie Pie pointlessly observed while standing on the mattress. My impromptu landing had knocked up a lot of dust, which I assumed had coincidentally mixed with the tear streaks. I probably looked like a drunken, washed out punk rocker or something. That metaphor would probably be lost in this world, though. Now I have streaks of mud rather than water on my face. Thank you, Pinky. I groaned irritably. She giggled in absolute delight, though. <laughs> You're welcome, Ender, she exclaimed. Sarcasm was lost on her as well, I noted. Wait, I hadn't told her my name. I opened my mouth to ask, but a sigh came out and I clamped it shut again. No, I'd never told Fluttershy about my crush either, but she knew now. It was probably a similar situation, as both Rarity and Rainbowdash could have told any number of ponies. Why well, ask, then? Pinky watched me for a few seconds before giggling. <laughs> well, some ponies are frowny face today. We're gonna have to fix that, she declared, as if diagnosing me with a common cold. I noticed she made no attempts to actually figure out what was wrong. Don't you have a job you're supposed to be doing right now? I asked, groaning as I stood up. Nope, today's a day off, so I shall devote it to you. She pledged, throwing a cute salute and puffing herself up. <sighs> Damn it. I sighed and shook my head. I'll be fine. I just need to give Twilight some space is all. 
I assured, picking the leather strap back up in my teeth. I've gotten a lot more flexible with what I put in my mouth, I noticed. Maybe because it was effectively the only part that I could grasp things with. Aww, but I need to eat up all these muffins! And you were going to AJ's farm anyway. Might as well share. She whined, making a silly pouting face. Wait, muffins? What the hell did that have to do with hanging around me? As if on cue, she smirked and pulled an entire tray of muffins out of her saddlebags. All of them somehow still on the thing. Well, dang. I found myself getting a headache as I tried to figure out how she did that. But my stomach betrayed me with a rumble, and she snickered merrily. I suddenly remembered that I had technically eaten absolutely nothing at the picnic earlier. Wait, hold on a second. I was going to Sweet Apple Lakers? Turning to look, I noticed that, yeah, I was aimed in the direction of the farm. Huh. Pinky's intelligence was subtle, but irrefutable. Her seemingly innocent insanity might just be a ruse to throw us off the scent of her master plans. Suddenly, she was even more of a monster than I had originally thought. What if she was leading every pony astray with her cute and innocent demeanor while secretly plotting the downfall of Equestria? Did you do it to say Applejack needs some help anyway? And muffins! They're always needed. She added, pointing in the direction of the farm. Alternatively, I decided I could be jumping to conclusions again. Muffins? Really? I asked, giving in to the fact that she wasn't going to leave or get off the mattress. I groaned as I pulled and got up momentum again. I was very careful to balance the strap further onto my chest this time, lest I accidentally get garroted. Of course! Beats cupcakes, right? She reasoned. Uh, I tried not to think of either cupcakes or Rainbow Dash. That was a low blow, Pinky. Sighing, I hauled us at a moderate turtle's pace towards the farm. But are you sure that's true? I asked, finding it shocking at best. Pinky nodded to my left in my peripheral vision. We rode down a rather large hill, traveling down a dirt path heading towards the barn on the property. The mattress made for a very nice makeshift cart after I jury-rigged a stick into the two front wheels. It formed a simple bent axle I could steer with the leather strap. Of course! Muffins are the best for long journeys. They can last practically forever, but cookies being out pound for pound in space saving, she repeated. I did the calculations and realized she was right, due to the volume taken into account. Huh, amazing. I never would have thought of that, I admitted. I packed for long trips before. You always need a towel, too, no matter what. Oh, and a book to keep you entertained, she explained, waving her hoof in front of her as if to make a point to a lecture hall. Towel, book, muffins, got it. I made a mental note to stock up on these vital items as soon as possible. But what about the maple syrup? I asked, suddenly confused. It makes good adhesive, and it's yummy. Or do you prefer caramel? She asked, tilting her head towards me. <sighs> Crap, I hadn't thought about it before. Had I been doing everything wrong up until now? I frowned. I think the caramel would be easier managed, but only in colder temperatures. Otherwise, I'd have to say syrup, so depends on the climate travel to. I reasoned. Pinkie Pie made a squeal of delight and nodded enthusiastically. Yee! Well, you're right! I'll have to add that to my notes. I never thought of that. She replied, sounding giddy again. Her energy was infectious, and I found myself smiling and nodding along with her as we reached the bottom of the hill. Applejack rounded the side of the barn, apparently hearing the noises and gave us the most confused look I had ever seen. What in tarnation are y'all doing? I woke up this morning and I was twitchy twitching with my pinky sense, and you need 
need help today, so I made separate bread in here, but then I was worried about how much I could have to fit in my pack, and we were discussing if I could have put more treats in it or fit an extra muffin or two, but eventually decided that I couldn't possibly fit anything else in the saddlebags. Pinkie Pie enlightened in one long, rapidly accelerating statement. When did she have taken time to take a breath? Applejack gave her a deadpan look for a few seconds before releasing a sigh and nodding. Huh, <sighs> dead on. As usual, Sugar Cube. Big Mac and I couldn't get back to the house on account of the cart being busted. Could definitely use some food if you're in the mood for sharing, she explained, looking a tad glum before noticing me again and adding, And what brings you here? I met him on the way. He was all dirty and I was all, You're coming with me to feel better and help. And then there were frogs. It was so cool. She spelled out before I could even open my mouth. She only seemed to have one volume when excited. Wait, help? She never mentioned I was supposed to. Oh no. No, she promised. Pinky! We promised to never speak of the frogs again! I reminded, glaring at her. The stain on my memory and purity was just too great. I, and I had just repaired my relationship with Applejack, too. Pinky gasped and looked pleadingly back at me. AJ just looked bewildered. But, but, please? How you used that vine and tree bark was so creative! She whined. Uh, please, no, Pinky, I begged, falling at her hooves and looking hopefully up at her. I hadn't even known they could jump that high or stretch like that. Applejack exhaled sharply, looking a little worn down. You know what? I really don't care anymore, she muttered, looking back up at me from her sudden stupor. Her eyes subtly traced the lines that ran down my cheeks and then shifted down to the cot. She stared at it for a few seconds while Pinky started playing with my mane, as I was still at her hooves. Oddly, she seemed sated now, as if she had never intended to tell Applejack to begin with. You can move the cot inside the barn for tonight. Applejack suddenly spoke up, gesturing in the direction of the building. Wait, what? Just like that? It's okay for me to stay? I asked tentatively. Pinky giggled gently and patted me on the head. Of course! She's not going to put the cot in the barn for its own sake, is she? She reasoned, smiling at me knowingly. Hey, that wasn't fair. If she was immune to sarcasm, she wasn't allowed to use it for herself. I expect to find out why Twa kicked you out eventually, mind you. I just need to get our supplies back to the house before tonight. We're supposed to get rain and the barn ain't as dry as it used to be, Applejack added, giving me a warmer smile and a nod before turning and trotting back around the barn. I felt a little warmer, glad that she was willing to give me a chance to explain it. She probably assumed I was a more innocent form of insane now, rather than a deranged molester or murderer. Wait, not as dry? Pinky smiled happily and, much to my confusion, hopped around the barn instead of walking, following after Applejack. I, I gave up caring at that point. It was still a roof, which was better than the tree I was anticipating hijacking. Which said something, considering the luck I had with trees, really. I gave a grunt and continued pulling the mattress forward and around the side of the barn. I was able to get it inside easily enough, with the main door open like it was. The inside of the barn was a little smaller than I recalled before I realized that the process of loading it with apple crates had started. They seemingly got the bottom filled up first, which didn't surprise me. I went to the corner directly to the right of the door and sat the cot down there, kicking the legs down on it again. My makeshift axle popped loose, and I smiled as I undid the straps with my hooves. It was a clever little idea, but I tried not to let it go to my head. On a whim, I also grabbed the coiled up vine lengths I had on the back of the mattress and dropped them in front with the axle and leather strap. How he managed to swing that far without hitting any trees was beyond me. I shuddered and pushed the memory away, hopefully forever. Peeking over at the cart, I noticed the same red stallion from before. 
I shuddered as I realized just how massive he looked close up. He was at least a full head taller than I was, and easily twice as heavy. There wasn't a bit of him that wasn't muscled. It was more than a little intimidating. Still no go on the fixin'? Applejack asked, sliding down onto her tummy and peeking under the collapsed cart. Now that I was looking closer, I saw she had quite a bit of muscle as well. Part of me wished I had a little more shape to me, aside from stringy and squishy. Those were not appreciated adjectives. Nope. Got the wheel back on, though, he replied in a low but calm voice. Frowning, I walked over ignoring Pinky playing with the pulley system in the background, and looked under the cart as well. The axle was very plainly split in two, and I predicted what had happened. The wheel had popped off as they were loading it, and the cart had tipped and smashed the end of the axle into the ground with the full weight behind it. Big Mac groaned as he lifted the snapped axle up again, trying to line it up so the broken ends wedged themselves together. I shook my head weakly. That's not going to work. If you're lucky, you'd get maybe 10 feet before it rotated out of place and snapped again, I warned, not wanting them to waste the effort. Abadak looked over at me from under the cart, wearing a frown. What? Oh, pony feathers. We need a professional to come and take a gander then, she groaned, sounding frustrated. I was hearing a lot of frustration today. This frustration, however, I could fix. Looking around, it didn't take me long to spot an older, retired-looking dusting broom laying against the wall with other newer ones. The bristles were frayed, and it looked like they were getting ready to replace it. Perfect. I trotted over to it with slightly more enthusiasm and grabbed it in my mouth. Hmm. Dust and wood. My favorite flavor. Ugh. Big Mac gave me an interested but reserved look as he watched me carry the broom back. There was a light thudding noise, followed by, ow! Applejack slowly sat up on the other side of the cart, rubbing her head with a hoof. I sat down when I reached them and gave the dust broom an experimental nudge with my right forehoof. As anticipated, the head rotated. Encouraged, I spun the head around until it popped off. Length is just about perfect. I spit on the wooden pole and smiled at Applejack. The old axle is toast, but if we replace it with this, then secure the wheels onto both ends, I bet we can at least get the cart back to the house, I explained rapidly. AJ went from a perplexed stare to a warm smile. <laughs> well, I'll be. That'll be mighty useful. Thank you, Mander. Think we can swap her out, bro? She asked, turning back to Big Mac. Yep, he answered simply, with a gentle smile and a brisk nod. He then nudged the side of the cart up with ease, and Applejack turned around and used her back leg to start to pry the wheel off. I saw that it was a simple insert with a peg locking system and frowned. Screws with a peg lock were much more secure. No wonder it had popped off. An idea came into my head, and I trotted rapidly over to the cot again. Hey, Pinky! Could you help me carry those vines over? We can secure the wheels with them, I requested, accepting that the broom handle didn't have holes put through each end for the peg locks. We'd just have to improvise. Okie dokie, Loki, she agreed whimsically, letting go of the rope in her mouth. I watched the lift smash into the floor with a dull thud, but she seemed unfazed. Instead, she pranced over and snagged at the second coil in her mouth. I chuckled at her before picking up my own and following. Abadak smiled as both of us arrived, lining up the new axle while Big Mac slid it through the bearings. After it was secure, we went around the back of the cart and lifted it up using his back, causing it to rise at an angle after the forward shafts hit the ground. Taking cue, Abadak hooked the fallen wheel on her side and propped it up, sliding it onto the pole. I dropped my vine bundle and quickly repeated the movements on my side, earning another soft smile from the mare. Ah, oh, shucks. It's too small. The wheels don't... She started to add a moment later, losing her smile. Pinky trotted up first, interrupting her by presenting the vine length. 
Abadag stared at it for a few seconds before getting my idea and smirking. Big Mac gave a knowing smile and nod before slowly letting the cart body down. I held my breath lightly as every pony eagerly watched. The broom handle held. I exhaled in relief and picked up one end of the vine at my hooves again. I saw Pinky go to town on her side as well and smiled at the energetic mare. Not wanting to be called lazy, I quickly got to work securing the wheel, wondering why I had been taught how to tie knots as an engineer. I suppose the basics would be useful regardless and were probably taught to every pony. Every one. It took barely 30 seconds for us to finish, and all four of us backed away from the cart to admire our work. Honestly, I couldn't help but laugh as I saw Pinky's side. Our styles were totally different. Mine was methodical, securing the wheel with mechanical precision and bundling the remainder. Pinky's, on the other hoof, was elaborate and fluid, forming the excess into a large, cute bow tie. She grinned at me as I laughed, and Applejack snickered, patting her on the shoulder. My breath caught as I watched them, eyes widening. Even if only for a moment, I was envious. In that split second, between the look I saw them share with each other, I realized just how close they were. It wasn't really possible for me to put into words. There's warmth and knowing familiarity, an assurance of trust and companionship. Nothing really gave what I saw there in that feeling justice. And once again, I found myself wishing that I could feel that for myself like a parched pony might want the rain. In disdain, I glanced back down at my knot and noticed its distinct lack of personality. I huffed quietly, but was washed out by Applejack talking. <laughs> well, I'll be. This might just work, she declared, sounding deeply relieved. Yep. You judged him too fast, sis, Big Mac added. Applejack looked flustered and momentarily looked away from me. I averted my gaze awkwardly, really wishing they would just put that behind them already. <laughs> I reckon you're right. To be honest, it was downright unfair of me. You have my apologies, she interrupted, causing me to start and look up again. She was watching me, her expression much softer, and her smile returned. It made me heat up a little inside. Friendship seemed to be a recurring theme in my thoughts lately. Regardless, I shook my head rapidly and smiled back. <laughs> no, it's all right, Miss Applejack. I'm just happy to be helpful, I assured. To my surprise, she slipped around the front of the cart and circled to my side. I fidgeted a little. <laughs> You're right, gentle cult. Parody wasn't kidding. They can drop the miss. Just call me Applejack, or AJ for short, she offered, stopping a few feet away and nodding affirmative with a smile. I relaxed a little and nodded back, still a little unsure of how to handle myself around her. My thought process was disrupted as two hooves extended to each side of my head, hooked the corners of my mouth, and distended my lips into a horribly exaggerated smile, causing me to flail a bald and bulge my eyes out. What the crap? More smiles, Mr. Frowny Face, Pinky announced from behind me, causing me to inwardly sigh. What, did you have a quota or something? Applejack snickered in amusement at her antics and just shook her head. <laughs> well, we'll talk more when we get indoors. It'll start raining soon now, and I want to get these supplies back to the house before it does, she reminded, turning back around and giving a nod to Big Mac, who was now attached to the front of the car via the collar he always seemed to wear. For the first time, I got a good look at what she was hauling. Oddly, it looked like metal tools and some sort of cloth-like material that had light-colored stains on it. Ah, so she didn't want the cloth getting wet before she could wash it? Weird. The tools were more obvious, though. Hammers, nails, what seemed to be metal wedges. 
I glanced back towards the already packed up apple crates and saw that they were indeed sealed. So this is what they used to seal up the crates after moving the apples into the barn? The cloth was probably to keep the apples that might have accidentally dropped from falling to the ground. Can you watch a wheel as we go, Mander? I'd feel better if we were careful in hauling it back to the house, she asked. I smiled and nodded politely to her, taking my place to the left of the cart. She went back to the right side. Pinky, of course, dived onto the top of it and grinned over the side of Big Mac as he smirked at her. Giddy up, big guy! She exclaimed merrily, with a playful wink to him. Big Mac gave a light chuckle before starting out at a light trot, easily pulling the entirety of the cart by himself. Holy crap! I figured he was going to pull it by himself, but I didn't think he'd make it look so easy. He made it look like he was just strolling casually. He wasn't even straining. Imagine if I tried to do that, my collarbone and shoulders would snap. <laughs> Gulping lightly, I followed the cart as it headed off back to the house. This day was certainly going differently from how I'd anticipated when I'd woken up. Sighing slightly, I just focused on keeping a steady eye on the cartwheel, 